Unfortunately for me, when I go to review this episode, my internet dies, so I'm not really too up take on the news up to date. You know, um, I really should have looked it up earlier, I guess. However, welcome to this week's episode of Gamers OK TV. I'm your host, Lord Roto, and um, you can see my shirt. You can probably tell what's coming, um, or you can see the title of the video. Yeah. So with that, we're just gonna jump right on into our review, and um, yeah, hope you enjoy it. And uh, sticking around after, we'll see. Uh, we wear spotlight this week, so do it. For this week's review, we've got Metroid Other M. Don't you just love that jingle? Well. It means the first of the big three Nintendo games for the Wii is out. And with it has come, surprisingly to my attention, quite the batch of controversial reviews and opinions towards a lot of the stuff in the game. So with that, I will give you my take on the game, because that's all I can do, really. If you weren't aware, Metroid stars... Our famous galactic bounty hunter Samus Aran. Following the events of Super Metroid, she's on a routine patrol and finds herself meeting her old commanding officer, Adam Malkovich, and his crew of scallywags. Now, much like Crystal Bears for the Wii, Other M is a shot at a series that hasn't really focused on story to focus on story and I found Other M's story to be quite enjoyable. While it does start out a little bit slow, and Samus' wonderful monologues may not be for everyone's liking, um, there's quite a few plot twists, and at one point I even teared up a bit. So, yeah, I enjoyed it. Now, what everyone doesn't seem to like is how they've characterized Samus in this. Instead of the tough, hard-ass, doesn't speak a word, but destroys everything in her path, Galaxy Annihilator, Samus, that we've been come to familiarize ourselves with from the Prime series. Unfortunately, Sakamoto considers the Prime series canon. So, you know, where once the Metroid series was a single timeline, it is now two alternate takes on the female bounty hunter. And as a shame as that may be for some of you to hear, that is how it's become, and uh, that sucks, but what can you do? However, as long as you are open-minded to uh, schizophrenia, this Samus doesn't seem too bad. And her open to emotions is kind of nice. It's a bit of a change of pace, but you know, you just have to realize what's going on now. This game is structured like all the old Metroids that you know. Metroids don't really like to change up their formula, except how you play the games. So that, that can change up. But it feels a lot closer to the old Super Metroids, Metroid Zervish, and Fusion than Primewood, for example. You play through the game, you know, you get your power-ups, you get your expansions, you explore. The exploring is a bit more linear in this game, and uh, some people might not like that, but they had to streamline it a bit more so it, you know, you knew where you're going and they focused on the story and you got to the next event, next boss battle, etc. The only thing I found wonky about it was how she got her power-ups this time. Instead of losing all your power-ups normal, normally, um, Samus has all of her power-ups from the start, but for whatever reason, she has to have her powers authorized by Daddy Adam. See, a lot of people confuse the whole Adam thing with like a submissive, oh, the man has to tell her what to do, but the relationship between Adam and Samus is more like a father-daughter one, so that whole... Metroid is sexist. Crap needs to go real fast. On a note, though, the whole power bomb being able to kill people thing does make a lot of sense, and you can't deny that. Then again, at the same time, I guess the Varia suit example will live on in everyone's head forever. 
It just makes me wonder, though, if they didn't do this, and they kept it this way it was before, do you think people would still complain that, Oh my gosh, in every game she always uses her powers. God, it's so annoying. Whatever. Let's talk about how you play the game, because that's the other controversial part. Okay. You know, they took how you play a 2D Metroid and put it into a 3D plane. Alright? That's... That's there. Okay. Now, you're playing with the D-pad. Okay? One shoots, two jumps, A goes in your morph ball. Okay, that's... Yeah, that, that really shouldn't be that big of a deal. I mean, people are complaining about the auto-targeting for monsters, but how complicated did you want it? On top of that, if you're going to compare it to Super Metroid, you, were, you realize to, to aim, you just pressed L and R to shoot up diagonally and shoot down. I mean, that wasn't very complicated either. The other control method for Metroid, and one of its, uh, the part that they highlight, is that when you aim the controller at the screen, it switches from third person to first person. Swapping to that is pretty seamless, and unlike what a lot of people seem to think, you're not completely dead. If you shake the Wii Remote when you're about to be hit, just like when you hit the D-pad when you're about to be hit, you will do your dodge out of it. Now, the only thing I didn't really understand was why missiles were only usable in that mode, but I suppose if they used the control with more buttons, that wouldn't have been the case. However, I found it to work fairly well. And when you're in third person, you pull off some crazy-ass moves. You're like jumping on top of their heads, blowing them all to heck, ba-boom, ba-boom, and it's all pretty fun actually. The combat is really intense and some of the boss fights are pretty cool too. The environments are up and down. Um, the non-technophile environments are okay. You know, you got your, the plant, the biosector, you got the underwater place that's Ice has gone out of control, and a lot of the places are frozen over. You got the, vol the the lava area. You know, the entire game takes place in this ship called the Bottle Ship. So, a lot of the stuff is virtual reality. There are some neat effects going on there. But the areas of the ship where it's, like, super high-tech and stuff, they just look awesome. Some of the hallways, they're all decked out artistically, in a very cool way. And uh, I remember this one hallway, um, it's not a chill up my spine, it was just really atmospheric. And uh, I'm going to use that note to sling us into another part of the atmosphere, and that is the music. If there's one thing the Metroid series has always been known for, it's its very memorable tunes. And I am sorry to say that Other M does not carry that same type of magic. Now, I'm not saying Other M's music selection is bad. It's just not what everyone expected. Instead of getting a lot of the, you know, tunes you'll hum, like ba ba da 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 da, you know, you won't find yourself doing that when you're playing through this game. However, in place of all that is tunes that are, uh, what sort I'm looking for? They'll they'll amp you up during the story scenes. They're pretty intense. But the actual ambient tunes, the stuff you hear when you're playing to the level, some of them are pretty fitting in their own regard. Uh, there's one near the end of the bio sector, the section, sector one, the plant place, that um, I thought was really cool and it was really fitting. I, I didn't, I was actually thinking about it and thinking if there was another song I would use to replace that prior from the Metroid, and I couldn't because that fit. You know, you're just walking really slowly through this facility and this music is playing. And you're like, oh man, that's a good feel. Or at least that's what I thought. So, oh well. So, needless to say, you know, I'm a Metroid fan. Was I let down by Other M? No. I can't say I was. I know a lot of other people are. But, you know, for some reason, when someone has this mental image on how something should be and it's not that they freak out and if you do that you're gonna realize that regardless you're purposely getting angry at a game that really doesn't have too many faults so you just have to take it like it is and enjoy it for what it is 
I did. And I had a great experience with the game. One thing, too, I want to add before I finish. When you beat the game, you unlock a cool art gallery, which seems to happen in Metroid. So I guess that's a tradition they passed down. And you unlock this mode called Theater Mode. I shrugged this mode off at first. Yeah, yeah, I did. But in this mode, you can watch the entire game through all the major parts you play through and all the major story parts. It'll do the boss fights like a giant movie. I thought this mode was awesome. I, I was like, ah, just the movies, whatever. But the fact that it plays through the entire game is sweet. Me and my friend watched like half of it, and he was like getting all into it. And I was all like, oh man, this is cool because I enjoyed the story, but didn't want to go through the hassle of fighting the boss fights and dying. Because you do die in this game, and it's not that, and it's not easy for everybody. So, sorry. Now, when you beat it with 100%, you know, as if that's new to anyone who plays Metro games. You do unlock hard mode. It has no upgrades, and pretty much everything will one-shot you. So good luck in that. And it's true, the game isn't that long. You know, if you know what you're doing, and if you've played Metro games before. But if you've played Metro games before, before you realize that there are endings you get for beating it in, like, so few hours. And while it's not the case here, you know, it's still the time frame for this game is the time frame of a typical Metro game. Just to let you know. But yes, with that, I will get down to my grade. I give Metroid Other M an A. It's not perfect. Is it the best in the Metroid series? No. Is it a bad entry in the Metroid series? No, not at all. I think you should look into it. You know, it's got this, and while you're waiting for the next big game to come out, you know, Kirby, I think you'll enjoy this title. You just have to, you know, take it like it is. I'm sorry if it blows away your uh, opinion on what Samus is or isn't, but oh well. The game's out. The developers made it. Any objections, lady? I felt confused and strangely exhilarated at the unexpected turn of events. I responded. Understood, Adam. No objections, of course. Hey, welcome back. What'd you think of the review? I don't know, I can't decide for you. Anyways, I know you've been waiting. Here's this week's We Wear Spotlight. If you've been looking for a Wii Wear game to play in between any big releases, I got one for you this week. It's called And Yet It Moves. It's a really nice looking stylized downloadable game for the Wii Wear service, and it's a puzzle platformer really simple controls you just press 2 to jump and you hold 1 and you can tilt the Wii remote to change the gravity of the stages with multiple game modes achievements you can unlock as you play through it you know there's plenty of stuff for you to do and I think you'll enjoy it so have at it what do you think if you haven't checked out that game yet it's pretty cool and yet it moves was uh, something I didn't expect Anyways, hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you have a chance, check out our site, check out our podcast, check out our boards, join, chat them up, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Peace!